Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, we've got another revolver video for you today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Windicator. And this is uh, imported by European American Armory Corporation. This is 38 Special. We often get requests to review some of the more budget-friendly firearms that are available out there, and this one was by request. So I guess the real question we're going to have is, does a budget revolver have the quality and the reliability that you need to carry with confidence? Well, we're going to find out in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thanks so much for being with us. If this is your first time coming to the channel, thanks for joining us. If you've been watching our videos and you're back again, well, thanks for coming back. In either case, if you haven't already done so and you like our content, please consider subscribing. It's one of the easiest things you can do that helps us out a lot. And you can just hit the subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen there. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll below the video and you can hit subscribe that way. Once again, it helps us out a whole lot and we do appreciate it. So, let's get right into it. This is the Windicator. Um, once again, this is uh, imported by European American Armory Corporation, and they're in Florida. And there's a lot of guns like this that are made um, you know, overseas and they're imported, and you can get some pretty good values on some pretty decent firearms that way. And this actual uh, revolver is made in Germany, and once again, it's imported here. So let's uh, take a quick look at this thing. Now this is the four inch version. They also make this in a two inch version. And they also make this in the 357 Magnum, which as far as the looks, it's, it's identical in looks. But we're gonna be using the 38 for our comparison today. And we always like to do a little size comparison. And um, I tend to carry smaller revolvers a lot. Um, you know, two inch or even smaller than that. Um, good example, you've got a little Ruger LCR here, which is a very common choice of mine. I really like these, they're light. And you can take a look and see, you know, obviously you've got a whole lot more firearm, uh, you know, mainly in the length, because if you take that away and just consider the overall, you know, shape of the firearm, obviously you've got a bigger grip on this by a large uh, amount. But, you know, people who carry revolvers, it's just like any other gun, you know, a lot of your comfort is going to come in, um, for me anyway, with the grip, how far this sticks up whenever I've got this in the holster. Now, obviously, if I'm carrying a, a four inch barrel, the main thing there is to make sure I have a good holster because barrel length isn't to me near as big of a consideration. As long as I have a holster, it does a good job of, you know, managing the length of the firearm but you can kind of take a look and see here looking over the top that you know it's going to be a bit wider than this lcr and they both have got pretty basic sights you know the lcr has got a little painted front sight and notch sight in the rear and you just got a you know a post and a notch on the windicator not real fancy, but it's not supposed to be. And of course, you can look at the grip length and you can see that the Windicator's got quite a bit more grip length on it than the LCR. But once again, I, I wanted to, you to see this on purpose because most people who look at revolvers, any revolver for carry, just like if they carry semi-autos, most likely some of the more compact models are either already in your stable or you've already looked at them. So this is a pretty good way to give you an idea of how much more firearm you're gonna to have to manage in the holster if you do decide to carry it. So not much of a surprise here. And um, this actually, it has about the same size and feel to me as uh, a Ruger SP-101, but that gives you an idea. All right, we're gonna jump into the features and uh, all that good stuff on this gun. But of course, before we do, we want to take a moment to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this uh, beautiful new example of the EAA Windicator for our tabletop review here today. Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough. So just having a look at this thing, 
Now, I think it's important every time I look at a firearm, you have to have some considerations. And, of course, the price of the firearm does make a difference. If you can find something that is a really good value that has the same quality and the same features as a high price gun, that's rare, but it does happen, and it's nice to see. So we're going to kind of take a look and see what they did right and what maybe they could have done better on this. Now, looking over the firearm, this is, like I say, once again, a four inch barrel. Um, it's got your basic notch and your post sight, which for a gun like this, you know, um, I, I'll mention this anytime I'm looking at sights, but to me, I'd always prefer if they would go ahead and just paint the front sight and have dots on the rear sight, just because even in the daylight, it's so much easier to pick up, but it's not a big deal. It's a revolver, and, and for me, like most defensive firearms, this isn't designed for long-distance precision shooting anyway. At least it wouldn't be for me. So, it's a combination of alloy and steel in the materials. Um, taking a look here, you can see that this is a six-shot revolver and it feels the components actually you know feel pretty smooth i was expecting this thing to feel a lot cheaper nothing against it but you know we're talking about a uh, revolver that the msrp is about 373 dollars it's about the same size as an sp 101 which is twice the money so if it's decent at all, then this is something that you might want to take a serious look at if you want a revolver that is, you know, this size and uh, for that type of purpose for carry. Um, of course, you can see here you've got your, your hammer. This is the only thing that I don't think has the greatest feel. The, the components feel a little... I guess grindy is the word. It's it's not very smooth to me. It's like when you pull the hammer back, it feels like it's moving through something, like there's resistance built into this. Um, of course, obviously, you've already seen that we are um, clear, that we are don't have anything inside the firearm. But when I pull the trigger, when you see the double action pull, it gets to a certain point. And right here at the end, you've got a little bit of slack. So you can pull it and get to a certain point, and then you've got a little extra space right there at the end. But it doesn't feel very consistent to me. I've got other revolvers that basically, you know, it turns and the trigger is staged and you have a little bit of room at the end. But this one, the feel of the double action trigger at the end, it uh, sometimes I can hold it and sometimes it just seems to pull right through now the single action um, is pretty good if you go ahead and just pull the hammer back and you come in here and you pull the trigger there's very I mean there's very little take up and I mean it immediately breaks and it breaks very cleanly and the single action once again seems very consistent so that part seems okay to me but the double action trigger pull is kind of just feels a little weird and inconsistent as far as I can tell and like I so said once again when I do pull the hammer back it almost feels like there's some kind of a grinding or some resistance and I'm not used to feeling that in a revolver like that so it's just something to keep in mind it, it you know we'll talk about um, the performance at the range because it doesn't feel like it's affecting it mechanically it just feels weird so you can look and see and you can tell by the coloring, you know, the difference in where the materials are, where your different pieces are, whether it's plastic or the alloy or steel. And there's a lot of mix of materials in here. Um, the grip, you've got this rubber grip that, honestly, this grip feels pretty cheap. It's got some, you know, pattern here in the middle. And it, it feels like it's pretty solid. I mean, it's a good, the material, uh, you can hold on to it really well, but it kind of moves around on the, on the grip. It just feels kind of, kind of cheap there. But 
I don't suppose that's a huge thing. It's not like it's falling off, but it just feels a little, you know, just feels a little loose. So when you go to eject the cylinder, this operation seems to be pretty smooth. As I look at the firearm, the fit and finish between the different parts of the firearm where the cylinder comes in and things of that nature, all these moving areas, all these spaces, they seem pretty good. So as far as the finish on the firearm, um, I can't really say they did a bad job. They've got these little fake ports, of course, on the top, which, you know, I guess for some people that might, uh, might have some aesthetic value. I don't see the point, but yeah, you got your little fake porting right there. But, uh, you know, it's a double action, single action revolver. It's got what you would expect on such. Like I say, aside from some kind of odd feel um, in the hammer, the double action trigger to me could use a little bit of work. And the single action trigger seems pretty good. We'll talk about that more in the range. All right, so let's talk about how it actually performed at the range. So right off the bat, I want to tell you um, the real disappointment that I did have with this is that uh, it's not rated for plus P ammunition. I know. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, um, I realized that it's a, you know, a, a budget gun and um, that kind of thing. But I figured that, you know, in a four inch barrel that they might have beefed this up good enough to handle that type of cartridge but it specifically says in the manual that uh, they don't have any uh, liability if you use plus p ammo in the gun so that's a little disappointing um, and what really gets me about that is i mean i can run plus p ammo in my little you know small you know air weight smith and wessons and my, my tiniest revolvers can handle plus p but you can't do it in this gun so just keep that in mind so, in other words, for a good range test, I had to go with some different options. Um, and, of course, standard ammo, um, I used some of the Federal. This is a 130 grain full metal jacket. Um, this ammo performed pretty well. Um, in general, you know, I don't expect a lot of problems out of revolvers as long as you use the ammo that's rated properly for the gun. Um, I would have liked... To have used my favorite defensive round which is the gold dot here but obviously this is plus p so we couldn't do that so that had to go to the side but i do have several others including the hornady um we had some shooters there that were curious about this ammo too so we ran some of this uh, 90 grain um, hornady in it and it seemed to work pretty well i mean like i say it's a four inch barrel so if you can get control of how you're shooting the firearm, you can shoot pretty good groups. Now, I'm going to tell you, um, that double action trigger pull, as inconsistent as it is, um, it was not a very good shooter in double action. Um, I shot a lot of rounds trying to kind of get used to the way this thing feels. And if you're looking for accuracy, you're definitely going to want to go with your single action trigger pull because it seems very consistent and it has a really good clean break to it so if you really want to see what it'll do and you want to see how good you can shoot the firearm I definitely wouldn't do it in double action it just it's not consistent from one trigger pull to the next one you know on one pull you'll yank straight through and the next one it'll hang up and you'll have some take up there at the end and um so I was all over the board and I'm a pretty good revolver shooter and um, I didn't feel like I could perform near as well with this in double action. But once again, in single action, it shot really well. Um, obviously it didn't have any problems. Um, revol I don't, I've never had a revolver, you know, stop working at the range because they are pretty simple. And that's one thing I do like about them. But uh, that's, simply, that's definitely something you're going to want to keep in mind is that double action trigger pull because I don't think it is all that great. And that's definitely something you want to keep in mind because if you ever try this yourself, you'll certainly see it. But um, overall, um, pretty accurate in single action. So what's it like to carry the Windicator as a carry gun? Well, I've got a few options I tend to rotate uh, when we're talking about larger revolvers. 
And once again, I typically don't carry a revolver this size. Um, about the largest revolver I've carried with any consistency was the Ruger SP-101, which is a three-inch barrel. And that's even more than I really like to carry. Um, you know, between a little Kimber, uh, little Kimber revolver and my uh, Ruger LCRs and little J-Frame Smiths, there's lots of small options that I think are a lot easier to manage than something like this. But um, if I'm going to carry something like that, I usually go with a leather like, you know, Galco gun leather. I've got lots of these, um, you know, for three, four inch and even larger revolvers. And it's got a big single clip, you know, it goes right on the belt. Um, it's pretty comfortable because really, as far as comfort goes, it's really got more to do with how much of the how much of the grip you have sticking up and this does have a really large grip so once you've got the firearm in the holster the only real concern that I have at that point is the size of the grip and it carries pretty well like this but it does have a large grip and so with a fixed holster like this, this grip is kind of going back against my side. It's not uncomfortable because it is a rubber grip, but um, I, I need to get a larger revolver like a, a crossbreed super tuck where I've got that larger leather against the body. I'm a lot more comfortable that way. But I was able to use something like this just to get some feedback and let you know what it's like. Well, we're talking about, just like any other revolver, the weight on this thing you know, this is a four inch barrel and this thing weighs right at two pounds. And you know, a, a lot of guns weigh right at two pounds. So the weight itself is not an issue. I definitely knew that I had this gun on me. Like I said, this is a bit bigger than what I like to carry. So between the grip kind of rubbing and it being a four inch barrel, most of the barrel is hidden inside the, um, the holster. So it wasn't a real big issue. But I, I felt like I had to change positions on this a lot when it was inside the waistband. Um, so this is probably not something that I would want to carry with any consistency. And um, nothing to do with quality. Because like I say, in single action, it, it performs flawlessly. And I'm still trying to get used to that double action trigger pull. But uh, so from a quality standpoint and reliability, it seemed fine. But it's a little big for me. And comfort is one of your primary considerations in a carry gun, so it's definitely worth mentioning. So overall impressions of the Windicator 38 Special by European American Armory Corporation. Well, I think you have to take a lot of things into consideration whenever we try to give this gun a grade, if you will. Um, it's an inexpensive option that functionally you know it, it's not bad i'm not a fan of the double action trigger pull because like i said it seems really inconsistent you know and that bothers me a lot but it's not like it fails to work and the single action trigger pull is really good it's got a nice clean break it's extremely consistent so in single action i think it's not bad now Aside from the the fit and finish of the gun, which doesn't seem all that terrible for the money, the materials do feel kind of cheap, and the gun does, to me, feel kind of cheap. Didn't affect its reliability, and it didn't affect its performance, but it is something to keep in mind. And, of course, this is one of those things that we'll kind of have to see over time how well it does. But if you're thinking just in terms of you know, what can I get on a certain budget? Well, this is under $400. So it's about half the price of an SP-101. But keep in mind that one big negative is you cannot run plus P ammo. This is strictly a 38 Special. So in my mind, if you were going to have this firearm, what would make a whole lot more sense would be to get it in 357 Magnum because obviously you could have a... Um, more powerful cartridge and it would still allow you the flexibility to use 38 special if you wanted to save money for practice ammo and things like that so it's just something to keep in mind so it's a good value for the money um as something that is 
a value firearm that's made overseas and imported. It does have some of the uh, material kind of cheapness that I've felt on some other guns like this before, but it does perform okay. So if you're okay with not being the fanciest gun and you're okay with kind of a questionable double action trigger pull, then it wouldn't be a bad option for you. For me, it's probably not something I would carry. I just, it's got a little work to be done uh, in the trigger department. And if they could get that straightened out, I don't think I'd have an issue, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, um, that's gonna do it for today. We really appreciate you joining us as usual. We'll be back very soon with another video for you. So until then, as always, everybody stay safe and have a great day. Thank you.